Let's talk about the tractor itself for a little bit then, because meeting the needs of the tractor, you've developed a, the model you developed is, is arguably, I, I think the highest demand tractor right. on the market. Is that right? Correct. Yeah. So our focus right from day one has been very much about, very much about, let's start off with fruits and vegetables. What is referred to commonly here in the U S as the specialty market. So specialty market tractors are often smaller. Uh, but globally, the platform that we have and the horsepower class that we are in is the highest by volume in mm -hmm. terms of unit volumes. So, you know, we are looking at like millions of these tractors that are produced and deployed worldwide. And our vision always was to start with addressing the needs of the fruits and vegetables farmers in the, you know, in the U.S., but then have a platform that is scalable globally. So that's why we are excited about the class that we are in. And very often we still do get feedback that, hey, you know, this cannot do, you know, uh, the work that our 300 horsepower, 250 horsepower, 200 horsepower tractor does. And that's true. Uh, but again, for us, our initial focus is very much on the fruits and vegetables where both the tractor class, but also the challenges that the fruits and vegetables farmers are facing is at a completely different scale because they have three times the labor of what you see for uh, what we call the, the cash crops, right? Um, the three times the labor means that the pain uh, that the farmers are facing in fruits and vegetables is an order of magnitude higher. So we are really focused on addressing those needs. Uh, so our tractor is not a half a million dollar tractor, right? Our tractor is uh, you know, a $60,000 tractor. I see. So when you started now, now with that decision, how did you get to that? It was, was it based on market research uh, or yeah. was it pretty clear from the very beginning, this is the, this is the model that we want to get into the market or, or was there, was it, was it ever considered to go with the larger scale ones to start? Yeah, no, we spent a lot of time looking at the needs of the market and also looking at where the opportunities are and also looking at impact. So when we talk about sustainability impact and the needs, um, you know, again, we're really close to, you know, hearing and feeling the needs of the California farmers, you know, who are struggling with, you know, sustainability demands, who are struggling with labor shortages, et cetera. So after polling, you know, all of the, the farmers here and realizing that their, their needs and their demands were uh, very much aligned with what the global farmer was facing, right? Every farmer around the world has a labor challenge these days. Every farmer around the world is being asked by their buyers to provide more data on emissions and to explain their sustainability footprint, right? So these things were happening. So when we started looking at that market, we felt that the pain points were very high in the specialty fruits and vegetables market, just because of the amount of labor that they need. Uh, and also the fact that technology solutions were not being targeted towards them because it was seen as a niche market where the volumes were low, the margins were low, right? All the big oh, equipment companies. The big equipment companies, if you look at their tractor sizes, right? Even the recent announcements, you know, the tractor sizes are very much catering towards the, the large farm operations, not the specialty right. tractors. So we wanted to make a difference with the specialty tractors and then make a difference around the world. So that's why all of that research basically led us to the conclusion that if we can build a, a high-tech tractor that answers the demands of the fruits and vegetables farmers, mm -hmm. and if that class is the most commonly used tractor platform in the world, we can really increase the volumes of the tractor side uh, and then bring the cost down and make high-tech available to the farmers, right? At a much lower cost, just because of the, the volumes that we can produce this in. So that's always been our philosophy and mindset and the market research backed it up and the customers uh, answers also backed it up. Yeah. That the digital transformation side of it, can we talk yeah. a little bit about the capabilities? Like I, I go on, even on your website, um, mm -hmm. going on to your homepage, I'm seeing, yeah. I'm seeing these, the tractor being used in different applications. Hopefully we can bring some of it up. Um, yeah. So what all, I mean, it's, 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 it's not just doing an operation, but it's also collecting data and it's electric and right. it's all these things. Can you sort of give the, the, the scope of what this unit actually is capable of? Yeah. 
So for us, when we talk to farmers, it's a very straightforward uh, value proposition. Number one, it's electric, which means, and it does everything your existing tractor in this class does, which means you're seeing diesel savings. Number two, we can elevate your tractor driver. We can take him off the seat and have him manage six to eight tractors, right? We are using technology to make it easy for the tractor driver to manage a fleet, not using technology to say you should hire a more skilled person. Mm -hmm. So that results in, wow. you know, in labor efficiency and savings, right? So your tractor driver now you know, can do more and can do other jobs on the farm and watch a fleet of six to eight tractors so those two things result in tremendous savings, but also the fact that our tractor and we have sensors that enable the driver optional feature set means that while our tractor is doing operations, we can also provide real-time alerts and longer term efficiency recommendations back to the farmer. It's a logical uh, uh, unit to do that, right? Because the tractor is the one that goes down that row a number of times. You don't have to pay for an additional drone run Right. or an airplane data collection or satellite data collection, the tractor is already there doing the, the work. So those are the three components, Jared, when we talk to our farmers, but it starts off with electric. It starts off with how can we make their, you know, their existing drivers more efficient in managing fleets. And then also, you know, do the same thing that a driver does when he's on the tractor seat, which is, you know, he's keeping an eye on not just the operation that's happening behind him, but also seeing what's happening uh, you know, at the plant level, and then relay that back to the farm operations manager or the owner of the farm. Just going back to the beginning, so when, when was the first unit put yeah. out um, in operations? Yeah, our first electric tractor has been out, which is what we call our alpha model, right, was a very small electric tractor that, that has been in testing since 2017. And then we built our, our beta tractor, which showcased both you know, electric and automated and smart data, you know, in 2019. And then now we have our pilot series tractor and the, the, as we have gone through these iterations, we have collected a lot of feedback from farmers and changed the tractor so that we are taking their, uh, you know, their feedback into account. And now we have our pilot series tractor and now we have our next generation tractor coming out, which will be the, the production design and then heading out to production. Right. So we have like the longest history of electric vehicle development out in the farm and not just here, but also globally, right? Our first alpha tractor, we collected feedback in Asia to see what the Asian farmer wants. Mm. Um, and now with our pilot series tractors, again, we're out in the field, constantly working with farmers, with their drivers and their implements to get feedback on uh, not just our tractor, but also how our tractor integrates into their operations. Thank you.